a groundbreaking subversion of mechatropes viewed through the lens of shattered, imperfect humans wrapped in a thick coating of pseudo-intellectual guff. A deliberately obtuse coming-of-age story about learning how to love yourself in spite of those around you. A creepy decades-long debate among 30-somethings over who the best underaged high schooler is. Neon Genesis Evangelion is a lot of things, and it leaves itself open for many discussions, interpretations, and merchandising opportunities. But what gets buried in the feral warblings of keyboard philosophers is that it is quite possibly the best piece of military aviation fiction in a generation. Consider, if you will, the last uncovered discussion point of Evangelion lore. The Eva Plane. 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 Okay, like, there's something here that can redeem Mari. I see you saying she airdrops in around halfway through episode two. You need to tell me right now does she parachute in with her Ava, dropping in from an Ava plane, or is this just like a regular <laughs> ass parachute that she's gonna show up in? This determines the entire worth of her character right here by how tangentially she is re related to Ava Plane. He's telling me no. He's telling me no. She's not related to the other. <laughs> Worst character. Worst character. Get her out of here. Give me the Ava Plane or give me death. Allow me to present the Perfect Grade Evangelion Eva Unit 01. I personally enjoy a bit of foreshadowing with my model kits, flipping through the manual to catch a glimpse of what the build is going to be like. When I first saw its relatively scant runner count compared to other Perfect Grades, I was surprised, but not necessarily concerned. A kit's worth shouldn't be measured in the number of parts, after all. The manual gave me a sense of ease. I'd of course heard many things about the perfect grade Evangelion EVA Unit 01 over the years, but who could say that the kit wouldn't be a joy to assemble with just how much love and care went into the assembly instructions? It feels like a paperback art book with a thick, glossy paper stock, wonderful full-color artwork. Even the choice of font is franchise correct. Ignore the eldritch horror later on in the instruction manual that whispers sweetly into the builder's ear. It's fun to build model kits. This is your hobby, your escape from the unending nightmares outside your window. The perfect grade Eva, its siren song calls to me, can't hurt you. Now complete, I recall how rare it is to find a model kit that's this faithful to its source material. Cause you see, what stands before you is about a hundred American dollars worth of skin tight bodysuits and misery. This feels disgusting. If you've ever wondered what it's like to build a real great Zeta, but bigger. No, no, this is No, this is way, this is way more Zeta. difficult. So, let's start with the positives. It's big. The color scheme is excellent. And its shoulder LED gimmick is there. Thus concludes the positives of the Perfect Grade EVA 01. As well as any similarities this kit might have to the current Perfect Grade line. I'd like to draw your attention to this. And this. And this. And this. Seam lines on seam lines on seam lines. Which in 1998, Bandai likely assumed you would just clean up with some plastic cement and not give a second thought about it. 
but even next to the perfect grade Mark II, it itself a 20-odd year old kit at this point, the difference hits you in the face like the sound of Ray Ayanami's one hand clapping. Oh, yeah, and these legs, these legs of the I must remind you 100 plus dollar perfect grade Evangelion are hollow. 20 plus years of experience can do wonders for one's reputation, however. Just look at what Build Divers was able to pull off in just one. Your priorities change, your tastes get more refined, you get shorter, eventually. Which brings us to this. The Real Grade, EVA Unit 01. Opening the box bears forth a paltry 13 runners for the construction of a spindly artificial human. Eva Lore, go look it up. And not all full runners either. Some only include a single part. But again, a kit's worth should not be measured in its number of parts. Which is even more important to remember here than with its perfect grade counterpart. Considering its master grade price tag. It's important, though, because this kit was engineered to make the simple act of snapping up parts feel like an occasion. The entire time you're building this thing, you're constantly swinging parts into place on these little pivots, alluding to the satisfying mechanical movements animated throughout the entire series. There's even a macabre sense of enjoyment watching what is essentially a mechanized spinal cord shift and bend into place by your hand. Even areas on other kits that you wouldn't really pay any mind to are a welcome event on the real grade EVA. Here's one example. The manual has you install this backplate after shifting this plug cover out of the way. You could easily install it without performing this step, but because the engineers designed the manual this way, it teaches you the proper way to move these small parts post-assembly. You don't just build this kit, you learn its intricacies along the way, watching as armor pieces frame indescript multicolor injection parts to become the eyes of the head before you even realize it as seam lines become the grooves of rippling muscle beneath bright purple mecha pants, as those parts bulge and strain as a real leg would, and over and over again, as you grow to appreciate the level of intense, passionate care that's gone into the finest details of its design. Things were a bit different 20 plus years ago. Bandai's priorities were to make the finished product as anime accurate as possible, while remaining somewhat cost effective to manufacture. Joints? Inner frames? No one wants to see those, they likely cackled in a boardroom somewhere. So either due to a lack of technology or just a hubristic drive to try something new for the sake of it, Bandai's crack engineering team came up with a solution. Straight from the local fetish shop. So, by the way, here's the gimp suit. <laughs> Let's turn our attention back to the manual for just a moment. Most model kits use cleverly placed armor plates and skirts to cover up unsightly joints and seam lines. The Perfect Grade Evil One doesn't. Opting instead for something that looks pulled out of a Junji Ito manga. A multi-part rubber suit which in my case, by the looks of things, spent 20 years in a musty storage unit. Now, here's the thing. I'm looking at this gimp suit and I can see mold on it. Like through the plastic, I can see oh, like what very like look at it on the screen. Like you can see it on the screen. Like look yeah. here. Here, look. I think that might have the origin of the smell because there are air holes on that. Yes, there are. There are air holes to vent this out on the back of the box. Like it's so strange. Uh, well, so I far would, so good. I believe it would consider that spamming because of oh, those. Oh nope, there it is. 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 Nope. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh no. Oh jeez. Oh jeez. 
You sure you don't want to have your respirator on for this? Why does it smell like that? Uh, mold? You want to hear mold? Paint us a word picture. <laughs> a word picture you said? <laughs> My word picture is oh no. <laughs> as ghastly as it was on the page, I could at least see its practical and tactile advantages. Several people tried to warn me that lubrication would make the application of the gimp suit much easier. And they were right. Not that I would listen to them or anything. <laughs> I leave you alone for one hour and I hear you sniffing multi body condoms. <laughs> well, when you put it that way, it just sounds irresponsible. <laughs> Okay, so you know what? I, I I do have one analog that I can think of. Like, when I was, like, 11 or 12, our family car was a used gray 1988 Oldsmobile Cutlass. It was owned by a lifelong chain smoker before my parents got it. Okay. So, like, you know, you know that smell of, like, upholstery and cloth with, like, 20 years of cigarette smoke in it? Now, what you need to do is take that car and drop it in a lake for about a month, pull it up, and then just let it sit in the sun for about a week. Oh, no. That's about what that smells like. Jason, you're supposed to put them in one at a time, remember? What? Oh, oh, remember you do. Oh, the I didn't know that. Oh, that's so I much easier. I told you earlier. Okay. I didn't. Yes, I you did. did. You told, you told me for the one part. You told me for the one part that I had to do that. Jason. Okay. What? Never mind. What? What did I do now? You see? No, you just you just keep pushing it, Jason. I'm sorry. You just you need to push it in deeper, man. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> Each of the raised bodysuit nipples needed to be cut before squeezing the plastic into the rubber sleeves. Which went well and had no problems whatsoever. Jason <laughs> has just stopped caring on the size of these holes. <laughs> well, like, I don't know what to do, dude. Find a pair of scissors, Jason. Well, that's the thing is, I mean, yeah, I can cut it with scissors, fine, but like, it still like leaves the bit underneath. Like, it doesn't matter what tool I use. Like, the best thing that I've found so far is to, like, cut off the little nipple and then just, like, jam my <laughs> side cutter in to make a hole. Yeah, if I'm entirely honest, that is the best way. Listening to literally anything else than my own frustrated breathing is the only thing keeping me sane right now. How does this do? There is nothing about this process that is fun enjoyable, or that makes any discernible amount of sense. After a while, I gave up. And in my infinite wisdom, came back with a solution. I have snow text, snow texture. Shield no. Dawn suggested Dawn That soap. it's going to make it worse. <laughs> Dawn soap? We I have Dawn. Did that work? The actual story, I think, is decent. The, the execution, maybe not. Hey, it's execution. on. Execution. Especially if you, like, include the Clone Wars TV show. I said it's on. Yep, yes, yes. Right. Right. Now, we're talking about Star Wars, Jason. But it's in. All right. Jason has wrapped his we arm in condom. Did it. Now do your other one. Well, I mean, that one's already on, though. It's not on all the way, though. Well, you're not gonna freaking tell whenever I put the yes, freaking armor on it. No, you won't. Yes, you will. The rubber will be stretched. Out, out of spite. No, at this point, out of spite, I'm not going to. <laughs> that was your idea. <laughs> What's wrong <laughs> with it? <laughs> The perfect grade Evangelion is an act of assembling plastic molded hate. You, dear viewer, are not prepared for the bodysuit. 
dare I say, no one is. The pure brazen ignorance of the design team behind this design choice is almost impressive, considering that their own promotional team wouldn't even attempt to use the damn thing. The photos taken for the box art and manual use rigid plastic parts instead. You have to imagine what the build would have been like if Bandai went with the black plastic instead of this weird rubber contraption. Perhaps it was an issue of manufacturing costs. Perhaps it handicapped the flexibility too much or made it too top-heavy. Which is a genuine concern considering the hollow legs on the perfect grade Evangelion. Either way, the enjoyment of the build process seems like a detail that was grievously overlooked by the kit's design team. Something seriously out of form for the overall franchise. Evangelion has always been fond of experiences and small details. It's also fond of hitting you over the head with needless religious imagery for dramatic effect, but that's besides the point. The singing of cicadas across the sonic void of oppressive normalcy, almost inviting the calamity of what's to come to fill its ever-present silence. Shinji's cassette player flipping back and forth between tracks 25 and 26, the lines, I have to go back and run away, playing to foreshadow the inner conflict that dominates the episodes of the same numbers. The fact that it's playing on a DAT player of all things, a tape media format that would have resonated with older fans of the show upon the original release, many of which probably used the same players in Japan and elsewhere, clutching a plastic chunk of self-isolation and the ever-growing chaos of a more and more connected outside world. Details matter. And at the same time, they really don't. Knowing that Shinji's tape player supports a dead audio format probably didn't impact your opinion of the last two episodes of the series. But for some of us, exploring those finer details can make the experience of being a fan more interesting. The same way that some sports fans obsess over player stats, or how your uncle listens to numbers stations on shortwave radios in your basement despite reminding him over and over again that he has his own house he can do those things in. Knowing you've discovered something cool that few other people have, followed by the irresistible urge to tell literally everyone you know about it, can enhance your overall enjoyment of the source of the thing that you're tiring everyone else out over. Which brings us back to the Eva plane, and one man's desire to tell you more than you ever wanted to know about it. It's the best part of this damn show. <laughs> it's just a plane, dude. <laughs> Look. You say it's just a plane. <laughs> What's the coolest damn thing that happens in the show? We're like, oh. it just shows up and it just has like Ava Unit 1 inside of it that it just like lets it out and lets it sort of drop down into position so it can drop it. And then as Ava Unit 1 is like running along to get into the fight, the plane's just peeling out into the background, just like flying away. And it, it just looks so cool. Like the, the amount of technology and wow cool robot that went into this one plane that's big enough to carry an Ava with a wingspan that's like a mile long. Like, that's the coolest damn thing in the show. Uh, can we get some yes. appreciation for this for this uh, this stress mark that is slowly <laughs> growing? That is, oh, that is growing specifically because this is how you assemble the part. You put in a screw, and I think that that screw is actually crooked, but that's how it's screwed in, so that's just how it is now. All right. Oh. Wait, oh, okay, so like, there, there's more support above and below that, and there's an... Okay, I just need to see it from the side so I can understand exactly what we're seeing here for this. And I'm starting to get it more and more. Just like... <sighs> I, I, I despise this kit. Well, the good, news, hate that kit. The, the good news is, very soon you'll be able to make a video venting your frustration and including me just going ballistic about the Ava plane. <laughs> yes! Just like catharsis. One of my mods watched the show for the first time. Let's hear what he has to say about it. And just be, I love the Ava Plane, it's the best thing in the show. And then you're just like, he gets it. Has this spot of trivia changed your opinion of Evangelion? Probably not. 
but it has influenced his. Just like the little leg flex and build order of the real great Eva has influenced my views on the kit as a whole, and the lack of those finer details equally affecting my opinions of its perfect grade counterpart. Yes, the real great Eva poses well. Yes, it has a great color scheme. And yes, you can turn the head 180 degrees or whatever. But I just don't care. That's not what I look for in a model kit. The lion's share of my time with a kit is in the build phase, and then it goes up on my shelf to promptly gather dust and copious amounts of rabbit hair. That's not to say that posing and reposing and articulating and swiveling and whatnot aren't valid ways of enjoying the hobby, I enjoy those things too. But as it should be apparent by now, a kit's worth in my eyes is in the experience of the build. And this is the most enjoyable build experience I've had all year. The Perfect Grade EVA 1 is a lot like the original dub of its source material, which depending on who you ask is either the spiciest hot take imaginable or just common sense. Putting aside the loathsome rubber suit, fans of the show that caught its original run might still show a bit of nostalgia towards this thing. The same sort of nostalgia that makes gatekeeping anime vets rail so hard against the Netflix dub, despite its strong performances and improved production value. When it came out, it was like nothing else released for the show at the time. And it's still an imposing presence in my display case. But there's no mistaking its inferiority to its modern, miniaturized counterpart. It's more akin to a scaled-up no-grade than resembling anything like what we would call a perfect grade these days. Which makes saving 50 bucks and picking up the real grade one of the easiest choices in the hobby today. Instead of hate-building some properly, cataclysmically bad gunpla. See you next time. Oh!